We'll be honest and say that we have doubts from time to time. You might have had to scratch your head and wonder where God was during something like that. Or maybe God didn't say anything when you prayed about something. His only job would be to say one word, and your trouble would be fixed. He could have also done something to help you. Your first thought was that God might be sitting on his hands, purposely dragging his feet, or just not paying attention. This made you doubt him for a moment. It's said that when the warm, moist air of our expectations collide with the icy cold of God's silence, Inevitably, clouds of doubt begin to form. I want to show the difference between doubt and faith for a moment, because I believe we often get them mixed up. It's not the same thing to doubt or not believe. We have doubt, because we don't know what God is doing or why He is doing it. Being unwilling to accept what God says is different. It means we don't want to do what He tells us to do. So know that you're not the only one who has had doubts, felt down, or felt like things didn't make sense. It's not just you. So what should we do when we're not sure? Visit Jesus. Stay close to Jesus and go to Him. Tell the Lord what you think and what you want to know. That's what a real believer looks like. We don't see everything very well right now. The Bible says that now we see dimly, but one day we will see clearly. Also, remember that when we stand before God on the last day, we'll know why He did or did not do what we wanted Him to do, because His hands were nailed to a cross, not on a chair. We have to accept and follow until then. Do you ever doubt? Ever have doubts as a Christian? In the Good News translation, this is how 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9 are written, Paul says. We are often troubled, but not crushed. We don't always know what's going on and aren't always hopeless. Even though we have many enemies, we never go without a friend. Even when we get hurt badly, we are not killed. The point is that you can have questions without letting them stop you. I'm still going to do what God tells me to do, but I'm wondering. I don't know how this is going to work out. I have no idea how God will make it happen. I'm not sure if this can be changed. Have you ever felt like that? Yes, you do. God still loves you, though. Situations can make us question God. In fact, that's the main reason why people doubt God. When their prayers aren't answered, when a tragedy happens out of the blue, or when they're faced with an impossible situation, they're tempted to doubt God. This is Jesus with his friends out on the Sea of Galilee. He is asleep in the boat. They wake Jesus up and ask, Jesus, don't you care if we drown? This happens in Mark chapter 4. A big storm comes up. In our minds, that's how most of us respond when we're under a lot of stress and something unexpected happens. We start to doubt. God, don't you care? Are you not interested? So how do you prevent your worries from getting the best of you? First, let them in with God. Second, learn to trust God's word, even when you have questions. And don't believe your fears. In a strange way, we usually do the opposite. We have questions about what we believe and believe what we doubt. That doesn't make sense. Let's learn to not believe what we think. If you want to remember a word, this is it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. It will always take me away from what the Bible says God wants me to do, or what He wants me to do. All the time, I'll lean on what I really understand. I really don't understand how God... I don't see how that makes sense, I agree, but I'm going to do it anyway. You see, what you believe with your little faith is what matters. Big effects come from having a little faith and a big, all-powerful God. Thoughts of doubt are a lot like thoughts of fear. We could even say it's a kind of fear. Though, I don't think we doubt God all the time. 
I think we doubt ourselves more often. We may believe that God is able to do something, but we're not sure if he will. Or we think God talks to people, but we don't think we ever hear him. We also believe that if we ask someone else to pray for us, God will hear them, but we're not sure if he hears us. But doubt always fights against our faith. It's important to remember that doubt is a form of fear. Fear fights against our faith. That fear often shows up as doubt. Did I make the right choice? I'm not sure. I might not want to do that. I guess I should, but I'm not sure. We keep going back and forth. Is anyone else here sick of not being able to decide? You'll have to decide and try something at some point, and hopefully it will work out. But what do you know? You messed up if it's not. It's not the worst thing ever. You should learn not to do that again. There are many things I've learned that I did wrong and then learned how to do right. If you're about to do something and doubt comes up, you might want to tell yourself, I doubt that doubt. I believe in God, and I don't believe my own doubts. Always keep in mind that doubt is only trying to trick you and take from you. When does doubt show up? When we wait, doubt and not believing come. We wouldn't have to deal with doubt and faith if we prayed and got what we wanted right away. Why does God make us wait? Because our faith needs to be put to the test to see if it's real. And it needs to be put to the test so it can grow. Many of you are being pushed right now, which is good for you because it helps you grow. A lot of you have big dreams and things you want to do, but you don't know why God isn't letting them come through. You might not be ready to face your enemies yet if your dream came true, and I know you will never be late. My big breakthrough is going to happen just at the right time. When you have to wait, doubts start to creep in. Trusting God means letting Him lead and guide us. Then we can go ahead and do what we think he wants us to do with confidence. But the question is, whose time is he on? He hasn't always been on time for me, if he's an on-time God. There have been times when I thought he would come through, but he didn't. And when my standards aren't met, it makes me doubt myself a lot. What do you do when you question God, like when you think God will do something but doesn't? Then what do you do when you thought something was going to go one way and it doesn't, like in your marriage, your income, or your job? When does it happen in your faith? He never said it would be easy, so listen up. I will be with you in the midst of pain, in the midst of heartache, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of challenges, God said. He never said that life would be easy. I am going to be with you. He never said your life would be easy or that you wouldn't have any issues after you follow Christ. The truth is that he says it will be tough, but he will be there for us the whole way. Knowing that he is with you even when you question or are scared is a very important fact. Jesus can still show up. And maybe you've wondered if God can really love you the way the Bible says he does, the way preachers say he does. Even though you know your life is a mess, you ask yourself week after week, does God really love me in spite of me? What should I do about those doubts? Because when you think about it, doubt is a bit like fear or worry. No one plans or wants more of it in their life. That is, no one plans. Today I'm going to be stressed out from 3 to 4 o'clock. It just appears and grabs you. Along the same lines, doubt is something we don't have to try. It can just grab us in an instant. A relationship. There are times when I think, maybe this isn't the right person. If you go through doubt, or have ever gone through doubt, read the Bible. It will give you great relief and hope because it is full of stories about people who deal with doubt. It was hard for all of Jesus' friends to believe. 
Here's what I'm sure would not happen if Jesus or God showed up in your room tonight. And you said, I just have questions. I have doubts. I'm kind of a skeptic by nature. He stands in front of you and says, hey, it's me. I am Jesus. It's real. I am God. You wouldn't say, wait, let me get my list. Let's begin at the top. Noah, right? How did he get all the animals on the ark? That's what I need to know. It would make you think, oh my gosh, it's real. All of your questions would be pushed to the side. You'd say, okay, we'll figure that out. It's true that you exist. Because everyone here wants to get to know him more than they want to know the answers to their questions. So if you are having those worries, I want to push you to pray. If you're real God, will you show yourself to me? You should answer my questions because I want to get to know you. My questions are important, but I want to know you more. Will you show yourself to me in a way that I can't miss? I think he will answer that prayer.